Well, hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Dwayne Butcher of Lean Frontiers and I'll serve as your host today. Uh, just a few points of logistics before we get started. Uh, today's short presentation is being recorded, so look for an email shortly after we end with a link to the recording so that you can view the session on demand. And please do share this with others in your organization. We will be offering a special limited capacity follow-up to this session for a nominal fee, so please stay tuned for more information about this opportunity. Uh, because of the duration, the short duration of this webinar, we are not planning to field any Q&A. Um, we'll have other ways of managing that, as you'll learn about soon. As soon as I'm done introducing Oscar, I will paste a link to download the presentation that you'll find uh, Oscar going through today. I will also make that available uh, in a follow-up email. So with that said, let me introduce our presenter today, Oscar Roche. Oscar is based in Australia. He works closely with clients to realize organizational change, develop people capability, and meet business improvement goals. He believes in the long-term success of any business lies in the development of its people. So for now, Oscar, I'll go ahead and turn things over to you. Dwayne, thank you very much. And the first thing to those watching live, I do sincerely want to apologize for what happened last Thursday. Uh, it was to some degree out of my control, but about two hours before I was, we were due to start, I just thought I'm not confident I'm gonna be able to even spend 20 minutes on this. So I thought it was best to postpone. So for those it caused a lot of inconvenience for, I do uh, honestly apologize, sincerely apologize. Um, but thank you for those who've been able to join in now, much appreciated. And Dwayne, thank you for that very kind introduction. And once again, the opportunity to uh, deliver one of these webinars for uh, Lean Frontiers. So the title, standardization, where does TWI and Toyota Carta fit? I think since we've been doing this um, standardized work uh, or applying standardized work and with people knowing my background with TWI and uh, the work we've done on to with Toyota Carta, uh, I've been asked that question quite a bit. So it seemed appropriate uh, to deliver a, a, a public webinar on the topic. So this will go, it's, it's fairly brief. It'll go for about 15 or 20 minutes, 20 minutes max. Um, and as Duane has indicated, there's gonna be more opportunity for answering questions. I'll discuss that shortly. Um, first thing to, to uh, emphasize is that there's quite a bit of assumed knowledge in this. So prior to the planned last Thursday one, you would have received an email from Lean Frontiers suggesting that if you haven't seen any in the previous series, could you please watch the one in from January this year in particular? Because in what I'm about to go through, there is quite a bit of assumed knowledge. So, so enjoy, um, consider any questions you may have and consider the opportunity that I'm gonna discuss partway through and at the end for follow-up. All right, so firstly, let's have a look at the model. And this is uh, for the five-step up model that we studied with Mr. Uh, Kato in Japan uh, about 14 months ago. And this is the part that assumes quite a bit of prior knowledge. So as, we've, as I've said um, throughout the four webinars this year, when we've presented this model. Uh, the January 21 was when it was in most detail. If, I, if you haven't seen it, and this, what I'm about to show you, uh, doesn't really paint a good picture in your mind, please go back to and have a look at that from that link that Lean Frontiers sent you. So the model, every, every organization, whether it be service or manufacturing, has work uh, going on in their organization. Whether it's standardized or not, they have work happening. Otherwise, they wouldn't, be, they wouldn't exist. Step up one in the five step up model is to establish our work standards. Now our work standards are pulled by the customer. First and most important thing in step up one, we establish our work standards. They are pulled by the customer. So the customer's over here on the left hand side. Then uh, we start with our, and we develop our work standards from left to right. So we start with our output standard. Then we develop our, and determine normal for our output standard. Then we look at our machine or our process, if, if it's uh, manufacturing, and say, well, what do we need? Uh, what are the variables there? And what is normal that will produce normal in the output? Then we look at what the people do and we ask the same question. 
So essentially we're asking a question, working from left to right, asking a series of questions to develop, to define normal for the output, for the machine and for the person. Now, if we're in a service organization, there's far less emphasis on the machine, obviously. It's from the output straight to the person. <clears throat> so pulled by the customer, developed from left to right. And the, the, the output we have when we've developed our work standards is we have a definition of normal. We have defined normal. From there on, uh, we go through the process of standardization. Being a verb, a doing word, it means we're applying philosophies and principles of the five step up model. <clears throat> if we do that thoroughly and over sufficient time, we'll end with efficient standardized work, which is production at tact, work sequence precisely and just enough whip. Now in step up two and step up three, uh, the main parts of standardization I, I, from, what, from my, my experience so far in this model is we problem solve abnormal and we build adherence to our work standards. So we problem solve abnormal and we build adherence to work standards. Then in step up four and five is when genuine continuous improvement starts happening. So step, up, step ups two and three is where we're problem solving abnormal building adherence to work standards, the normal in the work standards, step up four and five, genuine continuous improvement. Now I've noted this in at least two or three of the webinars that Mr. Cato said to us, and it was quite refreshing when we heard him say it, is that not every organization can and needs to get to step up five, but substantial benefit will be gained by adopting the philosophies of standardized work as to take you as far as is commercially needed. And another thought, um, and I've, those of you who've attended other webinars of mine may have heard me quote this before, is that lean um, to some degree did and didn't make sense to me for quite some time, but it did make sense to me and far more sense to me when I saw this statement about five or six years ago. Maybe lean is developing people who can and are solving problems and make improvements daily. Now, what this, state, this model ties directly in with that statement, fits really well, because in steps, Step up two and three, we're largely, we're doing a lot of problem solving and building adherence to work standards, problem solving our abnormal. Now through that, we've got, we get a fair degree of stability. And from there on in step ups four and five, we're making improvements daily. We're raising the bar in other words. So that ties in pretty well. And I think what follows is worth quoting. We've done probably most of the application of this work with three or four companies uh, where a lot of my learning has come. Um, uh, a winery and two dairies, and to some degree, a, um, a service organisation, disability provider. But the one we've done most work is a winery, a Warman estate, um, fortunately for me, not far from where I live. And Frank Catronio, who's the production manager, um, uh, packaging operations manager, said this to me about two weeks ago. And Frank's done a lot of work in lean probably since about the mid 2000s. He said the concept of normal makes more sense to me than anything else I've ever experienced in lean. And that was really refreshing to hear Frank say that because I can see the changes in his thinking and the changes in the packaging side of the operation as a consequence of really, really placing a lot of emphasis and focusing on step up one. So there's the model and that's as far as I'm going into there. All right, let's have a look at TWI. The main three um, elements of TWI and in particular, the whys of TWI. So we're gonna look at it in three ways. Firstly, the problem which, which, where that, that appears, if you like, or that we have, the countermeasure skill, and then how we develop that countermeasure skill. So there's typical things that most leaders encounter most of the days are going to appear, in, mo most of their days are going to appear in red, uh, in white over the red. So the first typical thing that most leaders encounter most days is don't know, can't do. Another typical thing is the person knows and they can do, but they're not doing it. So they know and they can do, but they're not doing it. So often that's uh, uh, mistaken to be a training problem. That's not a training problem. If they know and can do, but they're not doing it, then it's not a training problem. And the third one is hard to do and inefficient. So there's our three whys, uh, sorry, our three problems that, are the, uh, that, that typically leaders will experience most days. <clears throat> Let's have a look at the countermeasure skills now. So the countermeasure skill of don't know, can't do is the skill of instructing. The countermeasure skill of don't know, can't do is the skill of instructing. And how do we develop that skill? 
through the practicing TWI job instruction. The countermeasure skill for knows and can do, but they're choosing not to, or they're not, is the skill of leading or getting results through people. So the countermeasure skill is for knows and can do, but isn't, is not training. It's not instructing. It's going to be the skill of leading. It is the skill of leading. And we develop that skill of leading through practicing the skill of TWI job relations. And then the last one, hard to do or inefficient, the skill of improving methods is our countermeasure skill. And we develop that through practicing TWI job methods. So there's the whys of TWI, the problem, the countermeasure skill, and how we develop that countermeasure skill. And my experience is that if we help leaders develop those three skills, then 80% of their, 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 their skill they need for problem solving is covered. <clears throat> um, the, and let's have a now look at the, uh, an a similar pattern for the why of Toyota Carter, the problem. Those of you who have seen me do Toyota Carter presentations, you'll have seen those words in that picture on the left before. The problem is we are less sure than ever of what the future looks like in the business world and overall. And if ever we want an example of that, I think 2020 has been pretty, pretty good to, to illustrate that, that that's pretty accurate, that statement. Um, the countermeasure skill is scientific thinking, a mental framework for approaching goals and obstacles or problems. How do we develop that skill? We practice the Toyota Carter patterns. We have two patterns, the improvement Carter and the coaching Carter. The improvement Carter helps us develop a systematic way, scientific way of thinking and acting. So the improvement Carter helps us develop the systematic scientific way of thinking and acting. The coaching Carter helps us become teachers of that way. So we develop the scientific uh, thinking skill through the, through the practicing of the improvement Carter. We develop the coaching skill through the practicing of the coaching Carter. So there's the why countermeasure skill and how we develop that skill of Toyota Carter. So where does all this link into standardized? Uh, sorry, I've jumped ahead. Uh, before we get onto that, there may be gaps in your mind developing. Now, Dwayne and I in planning this webinar, what follows and some workshops next year, have considered a pathway for learning. Um, and we and this is the first uh, uh, step in that, if you like. So this Friday, December the 18th at noon Eastern Standard Time, there's going to be a live Q and A <clears throat> that I will host. $95 per registration. You must submit one thought or question when registering, and that thought or question will be discussed. And we're limiting that to 15 registrants, so to make sure that it's interactive and people get their questions answered and others can participate. So registrations are open now at Lean Frontiers for that. I'll, I'll bring that up again at the end. So if things are developing in your mind, questions, note them and please join us for this live Q&A. But note there's a maximum of 15. All right, now where, does all, where do those whys that I've just discussed fit in with that standardization model I opened with? Job relations first, and the reason for that is, um, and the skill of leading more particularly, Let's look at that first. And the reason for that is because to me, this is the most important. Um, if we don't have the skill of leading on getting results through people, if we're low on that, then I think we're going to struggle. We're going to struggle more with applying that model I illustrated. And let me show you why. This is an underpinning statement that was made by Dave Heim from Boeing about three or four years, three, three or four years ago. And it's one that really has resonated so strongly with me ever since, to the point where I I'm trying to get myself into a habit in whatever I'm doing, asking myself, are people, have I done everything I can such that people will trust my intent? Because if they're not, it's going to be hard for me to make the progress that was intended. So, so if we think of that statement, trust is needed right from the start with the, uh, applying this five step up model. Um, and trust is needed because it is about making problem solving and continuous improvement more efficient. This five step up model is about making problem solving and continuous improvement and perhaps training even more efficient. It is not about setting up for assigning blame. Some people have the perception of that when we determine to define normal. That means if we've defined normal, that means it's gonna be easier to define abnormal. Now we can blame people. That's not what this is about. Uh, and if we get off on that track, it's, it's not gonna happen, it's gonna fall over. So trust is needed from the start, right from the very start. How do we build that? Through the skill of leading. How do we develop that? Through practicing job relations. In particular, these foundations for good relations. 
which come direct from job relations. Let each worker know how he or she is doing, give credit when due, tell people in advance about changes that will affect them and make best use of each person's ability. My experience is that if, you, if, we, if I practice those foundations, I go a long way for, peop to, for people to be trust in, trusting in my intent. Um, and where else does it fit? Job relations. So remember, one of the components in step up two and three is we're building adherence to work standards. In other words, we're building adherence to normal. Now, there's a sub foundation in job relations, the first one, sub foundation of the first foundation, which is figure out what you expect. What I've realized is through, through building adherence to work standards, therefore building adherence to normal, we are communicating very strongly what we expect. Now, there will be deviations from that, which is when we do our problem solving, but it is our expectation. Our expectation is we deliver normal. So by building adherence to normal, we are figuring out and communicating what's expected of a, uh, within our organisations. And uh, it's really having a very strong um, um, positive flow forward in terms of uh, building that trust because it meets that sub foundation of figure out what you expect. So that's uh, a quick summary of where job the skill of job relations fits. Sorry, the, the practicing of job relations helps to develop the skill of leading so we have trust right from the start. And so uh, through building adherence to norm, we're communicating what's expected. Makes a lot of sense that the two go closely together. And it's certainly my experience. The better I practice job relations, the more effective I am in helping people develop this model. <clears throat> so job instruction and the, where does the why fit? This is pretty very black and white. This is the, probably the most straightforward one. Uh, and the reason, uh, remember step up one is we define normal. Step up two, Mr. Cato in his table he gave us of the, these step ups, Mr. Cato said supervisors should be able to do the jobs as is decided and educate and train operators. That was fair and square sitting in the line uh, for step up two. So if supervisors should be able to do the job as decided and educate and train operators, they will need the skill of instructing. How do we develop that through the um, uh, practicing the pattern of job instruction? So that was a pretty easy one to see where it fits. Just a note, and this is what I think happens a hell of a lot, and the more I consider this and the more I witness it, and the more I witness doing step up one, the more I think we overlook it and jump straight into writing SOPs and doing training, is this, it's written there in red, if training is done before normal has been defined, then the training may be, some, may be somewhat vague, subjective, and thus open to interpretation by the learner, and or training will be quite subjective based on the buddy expert. So if we def do training before we've defined normal, then I think we will run this risk. And I've, now that I can reflect from looking back on um, my work over the last eight to 10 years, I think I've been guilty of doing that a lot of times. Job methods, where does that fit? The skill of improving methods, how do we know, where are we gonna need that in this five step up model? So Mr. Cato said right at the, in step up one that we must measure time, people and equipment. Why did he say that? Because our, in step up two, we need to set standardized work, consider tact, consider sequence, consider uh, whip and check for wait time. So we do that because um, through develop, through getting to efficient standardized work, we want production at tact, we want work sequenced precisely, we want just enough whip. It won't start out that way. It's through our activities that it's gonna become that way. So we need a skill of improving methods to get to that point. We need to make the best use of the people, machines and materials now available. Now, those of you who have studied uh, practice job methods will know that that's the mantra for job methods. We make the best use of the people, machines and materials now available. We're gonna need that mantra and that skill if we're going to get through step up two, step up three, if we're going to work towards working attack and work sequence precisely. So we have the four questions, the PDCA pattern of job methods. We break down the job as it's done now. We question every detail and we use the six questions. Why, what, where, when, who and how. And then we develop the new method. We eliminate, combine, rearrange and simplify, and then we apply the new method. Through practicing that pattern, we'll develop the skill of improving methods. We'll, able, we'll be able to solve problems and get our production more towards tact, sequenced more precisely with a, a more ideal amount of whip. So that's where JM fits. 
where does Toyota Carter fit? So, uh, remember, sorry, remember that the Toyota Carter patents help us develop scientific thinking. Scientific thinking is a mental framework for approaching goals and uh, obstacles or problems. Approaching goals and obstacles or problems. So, problem solve abnormal. Step up two, step up three. If we're going to problem solve abnormal, we will, in other words, we have a we're going to need a mental framework for solving problems. And step up four and five, we're striving for new levels of performance. We're going to need a mental framework for approaching goals and obstacles. That will be very helpful in step up four and five. So scientific thinking fits fairly and squarely at step up two and three in problem solving, scientific thinking towards the way we solve our problems, and then scientific thinking to our uh, striving for new levels of performance. All right, so where to from here? Because just thinking something makes sense, as I trust you have in the last 15 minutes, may not be beneficial in a year's time. And for sure, copying someone else's work, that's not going to be a solution that works either, not long term. So as I said, Dwayne and I have spent quite a bit of time on thinking what we can offer in terms of uh, you guys who are watching, uh, putting something into action. So the first step is the opportunity for this live Q&A. So it's this Friday at noon, 95 per rego, but when you rego, you must submit a thought or a question when registering. That thought or question will be discussed and we're limiting it to the first 15 registrants. So the reg registrations are open now. What, it what will happen in that session is there'll be a deeper dive conversation. You'll get your questions answered. You'll be involved in other conversations and you'll engage in a deeper coaching exchange um, with, with myself and the others who will be involved. But for sure, you'll, there'll be some coaching from everyone, not just from me. <clears throat> then following on next year, February next year, we've got three workshops uh, related to what I've just discussed. Here's the first two. Uh, first one is an essential ingredient in standardization. It'll be Patrick Graup, who many of you will know or have heard of, and myself. It's in February two and three. It's a participatory workshop. We'll actually be using the simulation you can see behind me. Um, and it will help you understand how the two have come together. The second one will be a laying a solid foundation where we'll really focus on step up one of the five step up model. It's on February the 17th. Uh, again, we'll use the simulation behind me, but it's a practical application of step up one. And I'll be using a lot of the experience I've gained from Josh at Warburn, from Lockie at A2 through Mill. Uh, A2 Milk in Australia. And interesting one, uh, that gentleman on the right is Pat Geary from Story Construction in Iowa. We're actually applying the five step up model, step up one in particular, to the, um, to the planning process of large scale construction. Uh, right in the middle of that now, really interesting exercise. The third workshop is a Toyota Carter, uh, learning the improvement Carter by participating, again, simulation based. Two sessions, 9th and 10th of February. Again, it's a participatory workshop where you'll see the practical application of the four steps of the improvement carter. Um, all these workshops are open and available at that website, leanfrontiers.com forward slash workshops. If you want to join, uh, numbers are limited again to 12 for each workshop. So if you do want to join in, please go on that website, uh, that web address and have a look. Just a point with all three of these workshops, by participating in any of the three workshops, you'll have the opportunity for follow-up live online mentoring sessions. We've got three companies um, in the US that are doing that as we speak. Uh, they attended the workshop, now we're doing the follow-up mentoring where they actually apply step up one of the, uh, sorry, where they actually apply whatever the theme was online and we've got, um, uh, sorry, they actually apply it in their workplace and I coach and mentor them live online. So if you're interested in that and you're registered for the workshop, check the box when you register. But just a note, don't do that if you're not prepared to be challenged because you will be challenged if um, uh, through, that, through that program to apply and learn these concepts and philosophies yourselves. So in summary, <clears throat> the skill of instructing, the skill of leading, the skill of improving methods and scientific thinking are skills you're going to need throughout this five step up model. So that went a bit over 20 minutes, I'm sorry. Uh, it's funny how you time these things and then when you actually do it at live, it always takes longer. Uh, I, should, I should know by now that that's gonna be the case and cut things out. So that went a bit longer than planned, my apologies. But thank you, Lean Frontiers. 
my um, email address is stated there on the screen, website is stated there on the screen, the, uh, this presentation is downloadable uh, through the Zoom panel, that, Zoom system that you're on. So thank you for participating, everybody. Thank you for joining me uh, and those of you who joined me for others this year. Uh, thanks for that. Please have a very uh, happy break. Uh, keep safe, particularly you guys in America. I, I know we're very blessed um, at the moment with our situation with the virus, not so with you guys. So keep as safe as you can, enjoy your break, and thank you very much, Dwayne and Lean Frontiers. Uh, th thank you, Oscar. You, uh, you, you Certainly, as you go through something like this, you think of more things to, uh, to illuminate uh, what you're saying. Yeah. So That's no surprise happened. that, you, no surprise that you go over. <laughs> so yeah, sorry. nonetheless, uh, thank you, Oscar. Thanks for your, your thought leadership, for sharing your, your thoughts with us here today. And, and also for, for those that do want to go deeper for providing some opportunities, uh, for those that want to go deeper, really appreciate, uh, your, your efforts there. Um, as mentioned earlier, you will receive an email uh, from me shortly after we finish. Give it maybe an hour or so. Uh, in that email, you'll have a link to the recording as well as links to these various follow-on learning opportunities that Oscar mentioned. So, Oscar, thanks again for your expertise and thanks for everyone who participated in today's session. Have a great day. Thanks, Dwight. Thank <laughs> you.